Okay, so today we're going to talk colors, okay? So this, <clears throat> sorry, this is my YouTube account for Precious Little Lamps. And in the very beginning, when I first started reboring, I started with folk art. Okay, so let's take a look. down here okay so we have air dry the blushing it can't be as translucent or um, okay let's go back on here now right here I'm going to show you the colors that you need okay okay if you're doing full so art about um, how I, what I use and how I use my reborn thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to speed it up a bit. Okay, now these are different methods. I go by the primary method now, okay? So right here was a different method that I originally started with, with the folk art. So let's go over the colors that I originally started with right here. To get for the veins. Okay, so that's what I usually use for veining. So that will give you an idea. Um, and you always you mix, you translute your paints with the spilled water. Okay, so this is, let me show you, this is uh, the, this, the water that you will need. It's so hard to do with the camera. The spilled water, okay? Uh, what I do to make it easier, uh, instead of picking up this huge bottle all the time, I just bought one of these uh, squeeze bottles in the... Uh, okay, so basically here I'm just talking about... I bought one of those uh, barbecue uh, squeeze bottles um, that you can use for ketchup or mustard or sauces or whatever. And I just put the distilled water in there because um, it makes it a lot easier. So that's basically all I'm talking about here. Now I generally used to use right here, so you see... Or I feel it's right here you see the glass and tile medium well since COVID that has been taken uh, off the market so I now use liquid X matte medium which I do show in the uh, first video step-by-step -step discussion but I no longer use this because it's not on the market and I use ultimate fusion and it's not required so in here you'll see I just use the paper towel the um, little container the here so you want to see some color but not a lot of color because if you make it too thick your baby's going to come out chalky and you don't so right there i'm just explaining the uh translucencies of how the water should be with your paint so that you're getting a building up really nice um, even skin tones okay so that's pretty much what I'm discussing here right here you can see one of the colors I've already done is the blue I'll have it here so usually I use blue wash if the baby looks too red okay so and that's what we talked about with neutralizing using blue to neutralize if the baby looks too red to peach um, if it's really, really red, a really, really strong peach, I have used teal as well in before in the past, before I went primary. I, I buy these sponges and I cut them up. It's like a big circle sponge and then I just cut them up and it's a sea sponge. I use these for modeling. Um, people do take um, cosmetic wedges and poke holes in it, but 
I don't know, I prefer this route a lot better using the sea sponges than I do um, going out with the wedges. Um, I think the wedges would be easier to get into some crease lines and things like that. Um, so here I'm, I'm discussing the modeling um, and how to get increasing. Now back then I didn't do texturing. So um, you won't hear about texturing in that video because I didn't do texturing back then. So let's move on. They don't have everything here to have. Um, so I'm gonna go through those colors with you. This is parchment. Now parchment is good as a flesh tone. Um, or if you want to lighten your colors, um, it has helped me with that. So usually when I do the... Uh... What I have learned since then is you can take parchment and mix a little bit of yellow in it for the nail tips to make your nail tips look more natural and not too white because our nails are never like thick white like that. So you could take parchment, mix a tiny bit of yellow in it, and it will make a nice nail tip. That is something I have learned since I did this video. Yellow undertone. Um, I will use... Uh... Now for people who don't do uh, primary, you can do undertones. Undertones um, is like building um, skin toning and and so in the beginning, yeah, I did and there are artists that will do uh, that will do that but I am strictly primary method because um, those are all the colors in our skin all the colors in our blood and in our body so I don't do uh, undertones anymore but if you wanted to do undertones you could do undertones um, and you can learn about that in in this video here that is strictly with folk art the, uh parchment and the yellow together more yellow than parchment and uh yeah so. so what i'm discussing here is if you wanted to do an undertone like a yellow undertone you would mix a little bit of yellow in the parchment and uh you would do that as a wash and that would give a bit undertoning and that's if you didn't go the primary method that's what i'm explaining in here so let's go up so parchment is quite important um i couldn't find the yellow that she was talking about so i bought this one which is similar um from walmart and it's called daffodil yellow yeah so if i go over the colors and you cannot find the color that i'm telling you about um you can go with daffodil yellow which i did find at walmart so that's the yellow i have I rarely ever use this. This is pure black. I think pure black comes more important if you're going to be doing hair. But um, I haven't painted hair yet. I've only started brooding hair. Uh, this is black cherry. Black cherry is really good for uh, creasing. Yep. Yeah, so if you're using full cart, black cherry is your go-to for creasing. It's very, very important. You can also use it for the undertoning of the lips for the blood circulation into the lips and then add um, other colors with that to get the realistic lips. But black cherry, you must, must, must have if you're doing folk art for creasing. Um, and you can also use it for um, certain areas of detailing on the face. So that's an um, extremely important color to have. Also mix black cherry with um, engine red. Or if you prefer, I couldn't find the red she was talking about, so I got cardinal red. Okay, so this is another way to go to if you want your creases not to be as dark as black cherry. Uh, you can either mix it with engine red or cardinal red. 
because the color that she told me to mix it with, I could not find it. So those are your other options if you want. Like, uh, it all depends too on the race of the baby that you're doing. Okay, so um, if you're doing an AA baby, you're gonna need darker creases. If you're doing a very pale baby, you don't want really dark creases. So it, it all depends. So if you want lighter creases, mix with one of those colors, either engine red or cardinal red, which I'll leave up there for a second so you can write those down. Um, but black cherry is a must have, okay? And either one of the, uh, both of those reds are good to have because one is darker than the other. So depending on what race you're working on, if you're planning on sticking with full cart, then you want to um, have those other two colors. Um, so those I use to mix my um, blushing. Uh, not blushing, sorry, I'm creasing. For blushing, um, it's a blue, not blushing, short. Yes, I use black cherry in the red for blushing. The shading, you use blue. So I usually use true blue for the, for the uh, shading. So as you saw there, true blue is uh, great for shading. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yellow orker um, I use for yellow undertone. Uh, this this is a new yellow. This is better for color. I mean, I guess you could use it for yellow undertone. It's a little bright to me for that. I use the yellow orchid for that. But this is good um, for certain washes that you need. Um, but if you want a lighter uh, yellow undertone, you could use, uh, um, this is daffodil yellow, because I can't find the yellow that she requested. This is uh, territorial beige. I haven't even used it um, again. That's more for hair if you're going to do painted hair. This is uh, a ballet pink. It helps with if you want like peachy colors um, to your babies, as well as I have baby pink. And I have crushed coral. It's one of those to get that um, the most peaches and cream kind of look you're looking at fresh coral. Okay, if you want it to go lighter, you can mix these with hair or use these ones by yourself. It's whatever you prefer. Um, but yeah, for the peachy look, definitely fresh coral. Fresh coral is actually also, um, let's see if I can have fresh coral. Just gonna fast forward. Oh. Now, if you want to do a color, uh, if you make a mistake with a color and you want to fix that, this is a good one. Lavender. Lavender works really well as a color corrector. Okay. So that is what I use. Like I can have. I also use that for um, a lighter purple wash, and I use perfect purple for a regular purple wash. Okay, so these, this this one is for the light purple wash, and this one is for the purple wash. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Which I will explain to you uh, um, afterwards. Just trying to look at some colors for you. There's brown maroon. Brown maroon is good for hair, if you're painting hair. Uh, I think it's maroon, but... <laughs> um, this one is burnt umber. Uh, burnt umber I use, but not a lot of it. I usually use it to add um, a little dark, like just a tad darkness, and it's a very small amount that I usually use. You would use this more if you were doing a um, um, either a mixed race baby or a uh, you know like a black baby, African American, whatever uh, you choose. The term you use. Um, so, in, so anyway, that's what that one is for. I will, I do use this one sometimes to make a green. This is leaf green. If I want to make um, a minty 
blog. That's what I've been using. But then I went to Walmart and I found this one, which is called Citrus Green, because I could not find the green that she was talking about. Um, but I find sometimes if, if you mix that with the other green, it does help get a mintier, mintier look. Um, I have to think what other colors to show you guys. I also have two blue. Two blue is, um, I haven't even used this one yet, really. Um, this is important to show you as I use. The ones I use most often is teal, or purple, just one on one the codes are on there, but it's purple. Uh, engine red, black cherry, I use quite often. Burnt umber, just a small amount often. Um, the lavender, um, yellow orchid, I use often. Crush coral, I have used, especially for the nails. Um, so it just kind of depends on, on the baby that I'm working on, and I, and that's the, like my blue wash as you can see. And I, I keep them in this, I got this tier thing from um, Walmart, where I keep all my, it's like a three, you know, and it's really cool because I can keep all my paints together in there. So, you have further questions on the colors. Yeah. Okay, so basically that's going over the colors. Um, I've changed my brushes that I use now, so we're just going to skip that. Um, okay, so, so now that we've gone over the what I've done in the beginning, I'm going to go over the colors with you now. And I'll just, I'm just going to leave it on the TV. Yeah, right there is uh, Joanna. Joanna was done in uh, Liquidex Soft Body. So it comes out, I wasn't really happy with, um, I mean, she's beautiful, but um, the toning almost looks airbrushed even though it's not and I like them to look more realistic and I do find that the Liquidex uh, soft body uh, chips very easily um, or rubs off very easily maybe because of the thickness or softness to the paint. Now Laura we're going to go over um, the colors that I that I was given in the beginning and what they're for. So, in this case, okay, um, I bought all of these colors when I started with Folk Art, okay? So the colors I bought was, um, and I'm going to tell you the codes and then the color. The code is 953 Camel, made by Folk Art. The next one is 450, which is parchment. Again, full guard. Brick red, which is not um, a full guard uh, brand. Um, but you would have seen it in the video I just showed you. That's why I wanted you to see that video. And black cherry is um, by another brand, not full guard. So I'm, I'm going to tell you that so you're not wasting your time looking at, in the full card section. Um, I'm not sure if it was um, Americana or um, Apple or by Apple, but um, it, it was shown in the video. So you'll see it there. Um, and that is used. Uh, Black Cherry is generally used for modeling creases. And sometimes you'll mix that with brick red. That's what I have written down here. 436 is Engine Red, which is not made by Folk Art. 
and uh, that can be for fingertips, toes, elbows, bottom of feet, which is a form of blushing. And sometimes you can mix a little bit of black cherry uh, in with that as well. Your next number is uh, 942, which is honeycomb, which is made by folk art. And you mix that with uh, flesh tone, and that'll be like used as an undertone. Uh, but you want to use more yellow color. Use, sorry, I'm just trying more yellow color. Use yellow orchid. Oh, for more yellowy color, you want to use yellow orchid. Okay. Um, so yellow orchid is listed under 917 and it's not made by folk art. The other colors that you can get um, as well is 438 Ballet Pink by Folk Art and 2565 Crushed Coral by Folk Art. I use Crushed Coral more than Ballet Pink, but sometimes I would use Ballet Pink to lighten up the Crushed Coral. Now if you wanted peaches and cream skin, uh, you would go with 632. Rose Pink by Folk Art. Um, teal, if you have a really red kit and you want to use teal to get rid of it, um, the number is 405 Teal, also 401 True Blue, or 465 Sky Blue. I always use True Blue more than uh, Sky Blue. And I did use teal um, with some, when I had too much red or something, I would add teal. Uh, which you would take teal and mix true blue in it for, uh, or you could take teal and mix it with sky blue for your veins. Okay. Um, nine, okay, your next, um, 964 Midnight Blue, which made by Folk Art. I could not find that, so I've never had that color. But uh, you can add in four, number 411 Purple by Folk Art. Um, or you can add in Lavender uh, for eyelids. Lavender is great for eyelids and color correcting. So if your color is like you're not happy with that color, you can add lavender and it'll bring out a lot of that color. Obviously not purple, but, um, so that's a, a great color to have on hand. Um, and remember this is if you're not doing the primary method. Okay. Um, a color I never had was 504 Van Dyke Brown by Full Cart. I never found that. I did have number 231 Real Brown Folk Art, which is great for darkening colors or using it um, as a flush tone to darken the baby. Um, 479 Pure Black. I rarely use that. Um, yeah, very rare. But it's always good to have black on hand. Um, if something is too pink or peach you can also use eucalyptus or potassio mint which i never was able to find not made by full car and last but not least um if you want to darken your skin if you find it's too fair you can use fawn number 237 fawn and that is not made by full car so i'm gonna go over um a method with you that's not primary method we talked about primary method yesterday so we're gonna go over Joseph and you can see pictures of him um, in my gallery on Instagram or uh, the Facebook page or YouTube videos okay so I started him with a teal wash then I used a purple wash Number three, I used a yellow wash. Number four, 
I did a red undertone. Now, in this case, I did not use uh, a kabuki brush, which we'll we'll talk about in another video. I used the wedges. Okay, so now she said here, when you do your red undertone, you would, after you paint it, you would rip the bottom of the wedge and then blot it instead of not, instead of just using the wedge on its own would rip off the wedge which gave it like a bit of a texture then I did creases then I did veins and blue shading then I made the color prune for modeling I just looked at the color that she made in the video and then um, I went with made it the color a prune sorry my camera tapped out okay so prune modeling number eight i did purple modeling number nine i did light purple model so i use a darker purple first and then a lighter purple next then number 10 i did lime modeling which is like a mint color then i uh, last i did blue modeling after that, I redid the creasing and the blushing. And then after that, I did blue shading and veining. And then after that, I added dark caramel wash, which um, could be, uh, which is usually your burnt umber. Or if you didn't want to go too dark, if you were worried about going too dark, you can use the camel for that, that we discussed. Um, I used lavender on the eyelids. I really apologize about my dogs. They're not cases. Terriers. So on the eyelids, I used lavender. On the lips, I did three thin layers of lip color. So I made my own color, I guess, because it doesn't say. Um, and then I did red undertone. And then I did a green wash. Red undertone is mixing red with parchment, in case you were wondering. Uh, then I did a green wash. Then um, I was having, this, I, the ears were too red, apparently, when I was working. So I used um, lavender to tone down the red that I did around his uh, earlobe and then I did his nails which I usually used um, crushed coral for that and then I did another burnt umber wash and then I did his nail tips blushing again over his lips again then uh, I guess I was not happy with some of the coloring um, so I did a a violet wash and then I ended him with a, a blue violet wash so when you see him that is what I followed and you will also see June seven month old asleep you'll see her pictures as well and videos um, and I'll go over to you how she was done and June was sold before I even finished her First step for June was teal wash, then purple wash, but I blotted it with a modeling sponge to give like a, a skin texture. So I learned that I had missed that step when I did Joseph. So I made sure she had that. Then I did the yellow wash, then I did the red undertone. Uh, which I blotted off with a ripped wedge. Then I did creasing. Then I did veins and blue shading. Then I did prune modeling, purple modeling, light purple modeling, lime modeling, and then blue modeling. Then I did creasing and blushing. Then I did blue shading and veining. Then I did a medium caramel wash. So I would have used camel in this case. Um, then I 
did my lip color two times on her lips. Then I used lavender on her eyelids. Then I did her in a burnt umber wash to darken her more because she was quite fair. And then I did her blushing again and her lips again. And then I did a yellow wash and then I did a green wash. And then at this point she was sold. So the customer asked me to add blushing to her elbows, heels, toes, knees, knuckles, and hands and dimples. Her hand dimples, you know, um, where the knuckles are, which I did. And, uh, that's, um, how those two were finished. Now I have since moved over to a primary method, so, which I find gives you more of a realistic skin instead of a dull looking skin. So, but if you wanted to do undertoning and that, uh, skin undertoning and get that, pardon me, that peaches and cream kind of look, you can follow undertoning. Okay. Uh, which I did here. That is how I learned. And I originally learned from Miracles Reborn Nurse Baby Nursery. Miracles Baby Nursery or something like that. Um, I can find her links if you want to watch her tutorials. But um, it can be a bit confusing when you're not new to tutorials. But um, I watched her videos for um, six months before I started. So I found her to be the easiest one to learn from. Now she does use Genesis in her video. So I just kind of figured it out what it would have been in folk art. So, um, you have your colors set up for you. And if you had any questions about that, um, you can feel free to ask me. But now I am just primary method. So these are the colors that I buy. This is Ultimate Fusion. It's top of the line reborn paint. And you... And you do not need a medium when you're using Ultimate Fusion. Um, if in the beginning, if you wanted to, you could use a blend flow, which will help make it stick. Um, I'm not sure if you can use blend flow um, with other paints. That's something that you could ask uh, Ultimate Fusion or Sue Ellen. Um, but I only buy, this is the, it comes, you get the three colors together as primary kits. So it's red, blue, and yellow. Those are my colors. If I want to make purple, I just mix the two colors together. If I want to make mint, I'm, I mix the colors together. And then I also always, oops, sorry, they've fallen down. Now this is primary blue, primary yellow, and primary red. Okay. Uh, the other things that I buy is white. Is this the yeah? This is the white. That's to lighten colors and to mix with yellow for my nail tips. And sorry, I'm trying to get in here. This is a sealer that I mix in my washes to seal in the powders. You can also, if you wanted to, in every wash to prevent shining, you could put a, one or two drops of this in your wash and it'll always give it a matte texture. So if you were worried about your baby coming out shining, you can add one or two drops in every wash that you do to have it more matted. Okay, and it also protects the paint. That's another option that you have. And that's primary yellow. And I also have brown. Where? It's buried in here. Yeah, here we go. And this is brown. And I would use that to darken colors. And people use this for in the hair and stuff like that. But I would use this to darken colors. I usually root my eyebrows unless it's a newborn. Newborns are the ones that I stop rooting because it just doesn't look right. Unless the portrait that I'm following, um, the baby had thicker, thicker eyebrows. 
another good product that ultimate fusion carries is um what's it called what's it called um where is it anyway this must be it here no that's my primary blue here it is it's called anti-bead and this is a great product because you'll notice when you first start your baby it kind of bleeds the paint bleeds and rolls down and this prevents that from happening and that's made by ultimate fusion um so those are some like really great products by ultimate fusion and i'll discuss um i'll smile to tell you now we're in the video i do not use uh these wedges to pounce the baby after painting it I use what's called a kabuki brush. You can use the cheaper ones. This is an ultimate fusion one. And it gives more of a skin texture look and feel than the wedges with air dry give a flat look because the babies are not baked. So if you're doing air dry and you really want that um, realistic skin, kabuki brushes are a great way to go. So I have one for each primary color. And this thing is kind of cool. It's from Ultimate Fusion. It's um, eraser corrector. So if you make a mistake, um, you use it very gently because it can take off many layers if you go too hard. If you just want to take off the top mistake that you made or if there was like you missed a spot and it was there, you just take this and gently... I'll take off the lid. You just gently go like this and it'll take it right off. So that's a pretty nifty thing to have to correct any um, mistakes. Okay? And that's, again, Ultimate Fusion. And this company, this paint is actually made to stick to vinyl. So it is a great product. Um, the pigments are amazing. Um, this is my go-to paint. Um, another one that would be more of, um, affordable if you could not afford, uh, Ultimate Fusion would be, which is closest to Reborn FX's Golden Fluids. There are a lot of artists that do use Golden Fluids, which is pretty similar to Reborn FX, just cheaper, and, and it is sold at Michael's. So I hope this tutorial has helped you on your colors. And your paints we talked about yesterday i showed you what you use for texturing and modeling and and all that so we did go over that um so if you have any questions about this video uh when we're done that's good oh as far as the brushes go when you do washes use a flat brush like this okay it'll save you paint and it won't put too much paint on your baby and it'll do it nice and evenly so use a called flat brush and the best brushes are the ones that are made out of nylon for washes okay that is my go-to uh to actually paint on my washes and then i have several these brushes are sold on amazon and they're great for detailing they're very fine as you can see and they are excellent for detailing and creasing, I use a makeup brush because I use eyeshadow for creasing. But you could use a brush like this for creasing. If you're, if you're painting, um, trying to find it. You could use a brush like this for creasing, maybe a little smaller than this, depending on how small the baby is. Smaller the baby, smaller the brush. Okay, so if that um, helps you out, uh, like my pen I had this made <laughs> uh, if you have any questions feel free to message me and I hope this video helps you on your journey and I'm really excited to see uh, your babies when uh, you finish them thanks for watching